morning. It is your boy Jake Goble back at it again for Not Many Noble reading the Bible through in 22 with you. It's August 14th today, 226 years. We get six years, 226 days. I'm going to go back to sleep. Have a good one. I'm out. No, 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 I can't. But it is Pakistan Independence Day, National Creamsicle Day, National Tattoo Removal Day, and National Social Security Day. Boy, a lot of emotions get stirred up there, I'm sure. A lot of you guys, a lot, lot to argue about there. A lot, lot to be upset about. Except National Creamsicle Day. I mean, an Independence Day for Pakistan. That's got to be great, yeah? But creamsicles, whew, those are good. Creamsicles are really nice. Really nice. Really good. But we're back. So we're in Jeremiah, Babylon, Judah. But then we're also in second. We're doing the we're, we're we're going everywhere again today. We're going back and forth. Second Kings, Second Chronicles, First Chronicles, Second Chronicles, Jeremiah, Second Kings, Jeremiah. So put your running shoes on. Put your jogging shoes on. We're gonna take a few laps and we're gonna we're gonna get get around here. We are gonna get around. Let's start in Jeremiah fifty one, picking up where we left off yesterday. Remember, we were talking about um, judgment against Babylon, and judgment against this nation that not only, uh, of course, took and destroyed a lot of things from Judah, but also apparently, right. Um, uh, polluted or, um, well, so here, Babylon has been a golden cup. The nations have drunk her wine. Therefore the nations have gone mad. So it made all the earth drunk. So apparently in some way, shape or form was a negative influence upon the entire earth. So that's where we're picking up, picking up in the world English Bible, reading the Bible in chronological order. That's our reading list. So we're trying to figure out how things took place in history. So that's why we're jumping around all over the place. And Jeremiah especially, man, everywhere. He has made the earth by his power. Talking about Yahweh here in Jeremiah 51, 15. He has established the world by his wisdom. By his understanding, he has stretched out the heavens. When he utters his voice, there is a roar of waters in the heavens. And he causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He makes lightning for the rain and brings the wind out of his treasuries. Every man has become brutish without knowledge. Every goldsmith is disappointed by his image, making idols, right? For his molten image is falsehood, and there is no breath in them. They are vanity, a work of delusion. In the time of their visitation, they will perish. The portion of Jacob is not like these, for he is the former of all things, including the tribe of his inheritance. Yahweh of armies is his name. You are my battle axe and weapons of war. With you, I will break the nations into pieces. With you, I will destroy kingdoms. With you, I will break in pieces the horse and his rider. With you, I will break in pieces the chariot and him who rides therein. With you, I will break in pieces man and woman. With you, I will break in pieces the old man and the youth. With you, I will break in pieces the young man and the virgin. With you, I will break in pieces the shepherd and his flock. With you, I will break in pieces the farmer and his yoke. With you, I will break in pieces governors and deputies. I will render to Babylon and to all the inhabitants of Chaldea all their evil that they have done in Zion in your sight, says Yahweh. Behold, I am against you, destroying mountain, said Yahweh, which destroys all the earth. I will stretch out my hand on you, roll you down from the rocks, and you will make a burned mountain. They won't take a cornerstone from you, nor a stone for foundations, but you will be desolate forever, says Yahweh. Set up a standard in the land. Blow the trumpet among the nations. Prepare the nations against her. Call together against the kingdoms, against her, the kingdoms of Ararat, Mini, and Ashkenaz. Appoint a marshal against her. Cause the horses to come up as the rough canker worm. Prepare against her the nations, the kings of the Medes, its governors, and all its deputies, and all the land of their dominion. The land trembles as an, and is in pain. For the purposes of Yahweh against Babylon stand, to make the land of Babylon a desolation without inhabitant. The mighty men of Babylon have stopped fighting. They remain in their strongholds. Their might has failed. They have become as women. Her dwelling places are set on fire. Her bars are broken. One runner will run to meet another, and one messenger to meet another, to show the king of Babylon that a city is taken on every quarter. So the passages are seized. They have burned the reeds with fire. The men of war... Are frightened. For Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, says, The daughter of Babylon is like a threshing floor at the time when it is trodden. Yet a little while, and the time of harvest comes for her. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, has devoured me. 
He has crushed me. He has made me an empty vessel. He has, like a monster, swallowed me up. He has filled his mouth with my delicacies. He has cast me out. May the violence done to me and to my flesh be on Babylon, the inhabitant of, in Z of Zion will say. And may my blood be on the inhabitants of Chaldea, will Jerusalem say. Therefore, Yahweh says, Behold, I will plead your cause and take vengeance for you. I will dry up her sea and make her fountain dry. Babylon will become heaps, a dwelling place for jackals, an astonishment and a hissing without inhabitant. They will roar together like young lions. They will growl as lions' cubs. When they are heated, I will make their feast, and I will make them drunk, that they may rejoice and sleep a perpetual sleep and not wake up, says Yahweh. I will bring them down like lambs to the slaughter, like rams with male goats. How Shishak is taken, how the prey of the whole earth is seized, how Babylon has become a desolation among the nations. The sea has come upon Babylon. She is covered with the multitude of its waves. Her cities have become a desolation, a dry land and a desert, a land in which no man dwells, no son of man passes by it. I will execute on Bel in Babylon, and I will bring out of his mouth that which he has swallowed up. The nations will not flow any more to him. Yes, the wall of Babylon will fall. My people, go away from the middle of her, and each of you save yourselves from Yahweh's fierce anger. Don't let your heart faint. Don't fear for the news that will be heard in the land. For news will come one year, and after that in another year, news will come, and violence in the land, ruler against ruler. Therefore, behold, the days come that I will execute judgment on the engraved images of Babylon, and her whole land will be confounded. All her slain will fall in the middle of her. Then the heavens and the earth and all that is therein will sing for joy over Babylon, for the destroyers will come to her from the north, says Yahweh. As Babylon has caused the slain of Israel to fall, so the slain of all the land will fall at Babylon. You who have escaped the sword, go. Don't stand still. Remember Yahweh from afar and let Jerusalem come into your mind. We are confounded because we have heard reproach. Confusion has covered our faces, for strangers have come into the sanctuaries of Yahweh's house. Therefore, behold, the days come, says Yahweh, that I will execute judgment on her engraved images, and through all her land the wounded will groan. Though Babylon should mount up to the sky, and though she should fortify the height of her strength, yet destroyers will come to her from me, says Yahweh. The sound of cry comes from Babylon, and of great destruction from the land of the Chaldeans. For Yahweh lays Babylon waste and destroys out of her the great voice. Their waves roar like many waters. Their noise, the noise of their voice is uttered. For the destroyers come on her, even on Babylon. Her mighty men are taken. Their bows are broken. For Yahweh is a God of retribution. He will surely repay. I will make her princes, her wise men, her governors, her deputies, and her mighty men drunk. They will sleep a perpetual sleep and not wake up, says the king, whose name is Yahweh of armies. Yahweh of armies says the wide walls of Babylon will be utterly overthrown. Her high gates will be burned with fire. The people will labor for vanity and the nations for the fire and they will be weary. There is a quick little break here as we jump into 2 Kings 24, 10 through 17. All right. At that time, the servants of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up to Jerusalem and the city was besieged. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to the city while, her, while his servants were besieging it. And Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, went out to the king of Babylon. He and his mother and his servants and his princes and his officers and the king of Babylon captured him in the eighth year of his reign. He carried out from there all the treasuries of Yahweh's house and the treasures of the king's house and cut in pieces all the vessels of gold which Solomon, king of Israel, had made in Yahweh's temple, as Yahweh had said. He carried, all, oh, he carried away all Jerusalem and all the princes and all the mighty men of valor, even 10,000 captives and all the craftsmen and the smiths. No one remained except the poorest people of the land. Oh, verse 17. Sorry. Here I go. Here I go. I stopped at 14. He carried away Jehoiakim to Babylon with the king's mother, the king's wives, his officers, and the chief men of the land. He carried them into captivity from Jerusalem to Babylon. All the men of might, even 7,000, and the craftsmen and the smiths, 1,000, all of them strong and fit for war. Even them, the king of Babylon, brought brought captive to Babylon. Whew, there we go. It's killing me for some reason here. The king of Babylon made Mataniah, Jehoiakim's father's brother, king in his place and changed his name to Zedekiah. How about that? A little bit of a promotion for you there, huh? Second Chronicles 36, 10. 
At the return of the year, King Nebuchadnezzar sent and brought him to Babylon with the valuable vessels of Yahweh's house and made Zedekiah his brother king over Judah and Jerusalem. First Chronicles 3, 10 through 16. Solomon's 10 through 16. First Chronicles 3, 10 through 16. Okay. Okay. Oh, I see. I see. Solomon's son was Rehoboam, Abijah his son, Asa his son, Jehoshaphat his son, Joram his son, Ahaziah his son, Joash his son, Amaziah his son, Azariah his son, Jotham his son, Ahaz his son, Hezekiah his son, Manasseh his son, Amon his son, and Josiah his son. The sons of Josiah, the firstborn Johanan, the second Jehoiakim, the third Zedekiah, and the fourth Shalom, the sons of Jehoiakim, Jeconiah his son, and Zedekiah his son. I see. And then verse 17 starts, the son of Jeconiah, the captive. Now, yeah, that's interesting because, you know, the captive, well, the captive where? The captive in Babylon. How about that? How about that? Second Chronicles 36, 11 through 14. So where, where was I supposed to be reading? Oh, I was only supposed to read 36, 10. Oh, okay. I think I did that. Now, now I get to read 11 through 14. Here we go. Zedekiah was 21 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. He did that which was evil in Yahweh his God's sight. He didn't humble himself before Jeremiah the prophet speaking from Yahweh's mouth. He also rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar, who made him swear by God, but he stiffened his neck and hardened his heart against turning to Yahweh the God of Israel. Moreover, all the chiefs of the priests and the people trespassed very greatly after all the abominations of the nations, and they polluted Yahweh's house, which he had made holy in Jerusalem. Back to Jeremiah 52 one through three. We didn't finish 51 though. Are we going to finish 51? We didn't finish 51. 51 through. Okay. You're right. You're right. We didn't. We did not finish Jeremiah 51, but that's okay. We're going to bump forward because this is different. It's yeah. Cause it's not, there we go. Zedekiah was 21 years old when he began to reign. He reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Ham Hamutal, the daughter of Jeremiah of Libna. He did that which was evil in Yahweh's sight, according to all that Jehoiakim had done. For through Yahweh's anger, this happened in Jerusalem and Judah until he had cast them out from his presence. Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon, which we kind of already knew. We kind of already knew that. All right, and now back to 18 through 20 and 2 Kings verse, uh, chapter 24. Zedekiah was 21 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Hamutal, the daughter of Jeremiah of Libna. He did that which was evil in Yahweh's sight, according to all that Jehoiakim had done. For through the anger of Yahweh, this happened in Jerusalem and Judah until he had cast them out from his presence. Then Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon. So good for him, going out on his, going out on his own sword there. How about that? Now we're in Jeremiah, but we're not in 51. We're in Jeremiah 37. I know it's bouncing all around. I feel you. I feel you. Believe me. But that's why we're doing it like this. So that way we get a little clearer understanding of the structure of what's going on. So Jeremiah 37, 1 through 10. Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, reigned as king instead of Coniah, the son of Jehoiakim, whom Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, made king in the land of Judah. But neither he nor his servants nor the people of the land listened to Yahweh's words, which he spoke by the prophet Jeremiah. Zedekiah the king sent Jehuchel the son of Shelemiah and Zephaniah the son of Maseiah the priest to the prophet Jeremiah, saying, Pray now to Yahweh our God for us. Now Jeremiah came in and went out among the people, for they had not put him into prison. Pharaoh's army had come out of Egypt, and when the Chaldeans who were besieging Jerusalem heard news of them, they broke up from Jerusalem. Like, oh. Then Yahweh's word came to the prophet Jeremiah saying, Yahweh, the God of Israel says, you shall tell the king of Judah who sent you to me to inquire of me. Behold, Pharaoh's army, which has come out to help you will return to Egypt in their own land. The Chaldeans will come again and fight against the city. They will take it and burn it with fire. Yahweh says, don't deceive yourselves saying the Chaldeans will surely depart from us for they will not depart. For though you had struck the whole army of the Chaldeans who fight against you and only wounded men remained among them, they would each rise up in his tent and burn this city with fire. That's it. 
that's it for the day. And I'm kind of, it's kind of getting good though, right? I mean, Zedekiah is rebelling against uh, Nebuchadnezzar and you're like, never rebelling against Babylon. You're like, what's going to happen next? I kind of want to know too. I kind of want to know. But we're going to take a break right there because that's the reading schedule for today. And we are going to pray for Jeff and Irene in Asia. They need help um, facilitating Bible translations in the heart language of the least reached and Bibleless people of mainland Southeast Asia, specifically the Bui people who lack scripture in their mother tongue. B U I. I think I'm saying it right. Bui or Bui. I don't know. Bu- I'm going to say Bui though. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for your word. I pray that we would not have stiff necks like the people of Judah, the people of Jerusalem, and that we would not trust in the things that that they were trying to trust in, false gods, false idols, but then also deliverance from other places besides Yahweh, God of armies, was they thought about, oh, the king of Egypt, the Pharaoh, his army's going to come save us, or the Chaldeans, the Babylonians, they're going to get bored, beating us up, and they're going to go home. They looked to other things. They looked to deliverance, not not uh, n- not to you, not to you for deliverance. And then even then, it was just with their lips. Their hearts were still far from you. We don't want that. We want hearts that are soft. We want hearts that are set upon you. We want to love you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's what we want. And we want this also to extend to the people the buoy people who lack scripture in their mother tongue and pray that you would please bless Jeff and Irene's efforts to deliver to them your word in their language that they might come to know you, that they might come to trust in you. And in the meantime, while that translation is taking place, that other translations may help bridge the gaps uh, that are currently there. And that you would send your word into the Bibleist peoples of mainland Southeast Asia. Bless Jeff and Irene with diligence, with strength, with wisdom, with perseverance, with all the things that they that they need. Bless them in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, y'all. As you probably already know, show notes are at notmanynoble.com. If you want to get a hold of me via email, you can do that at notmanynoble at gmail.com. So if you've got prayer requests, whatever you want. You can hit me up. Thank you so much for listening, and I will catch y'all tomorrow. Peace. Have a great day.